In my mediated speech, I will be discussing how the NFL is facing a concussion epidemic and how allowing the use of medical marijuana as a safe alternative to the current pain management system of opioids can potentially save the lives of many players and possibly even the future of the NFL as a whole. In the 2015-2016 NFL season alone, there were 271 reported concussions, according to ESPN. That number is a 32% increase from the 2014-15 season. In 2017, Dr. Ann McKee studied the brains of 111 deceased NFL players in search of more information on the long-term effects of the violent nature of football. McKee found that 110 of the 111 NFL brains were found to have traces of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, otherwise known as CTE. CTE is a disease that has been found to be linked to repeated violent blows to the head, which, according to McKee in her article in the New York Times, causes myriad symptoms including memory loss, confusion, depression, and dementia. Currently, If an NFL player has an injury, including a concussion, they are prescribed a highly potent dose of of opioids, such as Vicodin and Percocets. Opioids are highly addictive and easily abused. Long-term abuse can result in liver damage and overdose. Retired wide receiver Calvin Johnson spoke about how readily available doctors made these pills in an interview with ESPN, saying, If you were hurting, then you could could get them. It was nothing. I mean, if you need Vicodin, call out, my ankle hurts, you know? I can't play without it, or something like that. That's how easy it was to get them. So, if you were dependent on them, they were readily available. If the team doctors and trainers were going to give them out, they were giving them out like candy. In an interview with the news outlet Vice, retired NFL linebacker Keith McCants revealed that he was consuming over 183 pills per week. Former tight end Nate Jackson publicized how the pill pushing of NFL doctors got him addicted and reliant on opioids throughout his career. With opioids, I generally experienced withdrawal symptoms after three days. On the fourth day, I would become irritable and itchy. Recently, offensive lineman Michael Orr posted an Instagram photo with 10 pill bottles on his bathroom counter with the caption, All for the Brain, SMH. Orr was active was an active member of the Carolina Panthers at the time. Many retired players have said that marijuana is a more effective and safer alternative to opioids. Retired offensive lineman Eugene Monroe has started a pro-marijuana company that slogan is Cannabinoids for Pain Management and Neuroprotection. Monroe publicized how the use of medicinal marijuana has changed his life. Managing pain with pills was slowly killing me. Now I'm able to function and be extremely efficient by figuring out how to use different formulations of cannabis. Marijuana is now legal for recreational use in seven states and the District of Columbia, yet the NFL still bans the use of the substance even in states where it's legal. Marijuana is significantly less addictive than opioids and could save the future of the NFL. A study published online in the Drug and Alcohol Dependent Scientific Journal it was found that NFL players misuse opioids four times more than the general population of America. According to ESPN, 52% of the retired players who took part in the study said that they use prescription pain medication during their playing days. Of those, 71% said they of those, 71% said they misused the drugs then, and 15% of the misusers acknowledged misusing the medication within the past 30 days. According to the center. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than 33,000 people were were reported dead due to opioid overdose just in 2015. According to the Drug Enforcement Agency, the total number of deaths reported for marijuana overdose is zero. With the collective bargaining agreement ending in 2020, a pivotal negotiation point for a new CBA will be the NFL's drug policy and the use of medicinal marijuana. If unable to negotiate a new CBA, players will be locked out from league activities, and this could be potentially detrimental to the NFL. Many retired players have used marijuana to improve their quality of life after the NFL and manage their pain. By by legalizing the use of medicinal marijuana, the NFL will show that it cares about their players during and after their careers. Even Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones 
has been publicly active about supporting the legalization of marijuana in the NFL. In conclusion, the legalization of medical marijuana to manage injuries and brain, brain trauma could prove to save the future of the NFL as a safe alternative to the use of opioids.